I'm here to introduce a specific case to you. It's a court case that we call the Pirate Bay case against, dot SEO, against IS. We just recently changed names, so I will probably keep on saying dot .se instead of IIS. We have a court case regarding a claim for confiscation of the domain names the Pirate Bay .se and Pirate Bay .se. The claim, this claim is directed both against the domain holder and the registry. And this is the first time in Sweden ever that we have had a case against the registry. So I will present the findings of the court and I will address the interesting questions this verdict arises. But first, what is this case about? Well, it's about copyright infringement. There is still copyright infringement ongoing through the use of the domain name. Is a domain name considered being an object or a tool according to the Swedish law? Is IIS liable for complicity for contribution to copyright infringement according to the Swedish law? If so, can a domain name be confiscated from IIS? Well, before going into detail in, in the case, I would like to guide you through the current situation in Sweden. Uh, regarding illegal content on web pages, and I will focus on legal, on ongoing legal copyright infringe infringement cases. Currently, uh, the law enforcement agencies, including the prosecutor, is trying different strategies to get to illegal content on web pages. These, these strategies, of course, include intermediaries enabling communication over the net. Internet providers, there is a new possibility to write copyright protected material, but the laws are old, or there are minor changes made to those old laws. So, what am I going to focus on? Who is responsible for copyright infringement of web pages? Who can be responsible for contributing or for complicity to copyright infringement according to the Swedish law? We know that according to the Swedish law, the responsibility for complicity is very far-reaching, but how far is there actually a clear outer dividing line? We had the original Pirate Bay case start, uh, had its final verdict in 2012. It was against the four founders of the, uh, of the Pirate Bay. They were natural persons who were prosecuted for contribution to copyright infringement. They were, do, they were done so by allowing access to copyright protected material on the internet. It's important here to remember that the, this was the users of the services provided by the PirateBay.se who were committed, committing the copyright infringements and the founders of the service, they were only convicted for contributing to copyright infringements. There has also been another case in, in Sweden regarding confiscation of domain names, but it's confica confiscation of the registrant's right to the domain name. And we have then taken the domain name down and then released it in accordance with our natural procedures, normal routines, so they have been released after 60 days. Okay, I will now introduce you to the specific case, and there will be quite a few slides, very legal slides, and I will try to, to introduce it in a non-legal, not too legal texture. Well, the background for this case is that the Swedish prosecutor, about two years ago, took legal action against the domain holder of the domain name, the Pirate Bay, .se and Pirate Bay, .se, and against the registry, as I said earlier. And the prosecutor argued that the domain names could either be confiscated from the domain holder or from the registry. And their cases against domain holders regarding confiscation of domain names have been tried before, but it has never been done before against the registry. So the prosecutor argued uh, that the domain names are tools that are used for copyright infringement. And domain names shall be the, the domain names shall be considered a property and or an object that, that can be com confiscated from IIS in accordance with the, either the Panel Accord or the Copyright Act. 
we, of course, responded to this, saying, well, a domain name is obviously not an object or it's not a property. A registry should not be held responsible for contributing to infringement of copyright. And the verdict said that the prosecutor's claim against us was dismissed. But the domain names shall instead be confiscated from the domain holder. So the legal consequence here is that the right to the domain names accrue to the state. So what happened? This was the district court verdict. The domain holder and the prosecutor appealed the case. So now the Court of Appeal will try the case in the end of March. Uh, IAS did not appeal the case because we couldn't, as we were considering that we won in the first instance. So I will now start to going more into details of the findings of the district court. First, the, the, the district court came to the conclusion that, they, that the copyright infringement is still ongoing through the use of the domain names. So that was the first thing. The next thing the court tried was if the domain name can be confiscated, and if so, if they can be confiscated from IIS. And the prosecutor has those two legal grounds for confiscation. First, the prosecutor claimed confiscation according to the Swedish Penal Code, Chapter 36, Paragraph 3, that says that the confiscation of an object that is, uh, that is due to specific nature is used in crime. It's possible. And the court stated that the domain name was not an object and it didn't have the specific nature to be used in crime. So this section of the law was not applicable. So the second legal ground that they used was the Swedish copyright law. And that states that property that has been used as a tool in crime can be confiscated from the offenders or other contributors. So the question here is, IS considered to be another contributor, can be, be considered being a contributor. Well, the court said that the domain name is a property in accordance with the Swedish copyright law, and it has also been used as a tool in the copyright infringement crime. Well, the next question that they had to consider is, can, it be can the domain name be considered being a property of IIS? And can it then, if it's considered being a property from, of, of IIS, be confiscated from IIS? Well, what they said here is that as we are obliged by law to determine rules for assignment, registration, the registration and transfer, and also the terms and conditions indicating that a domain name can be deregistered if crime is, is committed on the website. That could be considered, you know, for, for example, a copyright infringement. They say that IS has actually the authority over the domain name in such a way which is enables confiscation from IS per se. So, they said also that as since confiscation can be made from legal entities, uh, or they say that confiscation can be made from legal in entities and there is no need for personal responsibility from representatives. It's not necessary. It can still be confiscated from legal entities. Uh, so as we assign, continued to grant and renew the subscription and also charge for the, web, uh, for, for the service, we continue to supply uh, the domain name after, the, uh, after we know, after the knowledge of the crimes committed on the, uh, on the Pirate Bay website. That means contribution in a linguistic meaning. The court also says that we have no responsibility to control content, but 
we have the possibility to act. IS can act. Uh, the court also said that there is a merit to the notion that it is a responsibility for a service provider on the internet to respond to specific allegation of infringement. And here they say, well, it's shown that representatives from IS had insight about the unlawful handling with copyright protected material, and we had insight that the domain names are used to promote the crimes. And we have made a we have in a clear way taken a stand not to react. Therefore, they say we have acted intentionally. We have intentionally contributed to the copyright infringement. This is not what a lawyer wants to hear. So, in summary, the courts find that it was a very extensive copyright infringement ongoing on the Pirate Bay website. IS is not acting voluntary. Well, the risk that the, the, the copyright infringement will be on still ongoing. There is no cost for us. There is no scarification. So there are actually very, very strong reasons for confiscation from IS. And also they say that it's not a prerequisite that the act of complicity was a necessary condition for the crime. And here it also says, they, they, the court also states that responsibility in accordance with the Swedish law for complicity is very far, or is far reaching. And then they, the court started discussing in the, in the, verdict, in the verdict the meaning of social adequacy for IS as a registry, as the domain registry for, for, for .sc. The social adequacy is a jurisprudential theory of freedom from responsibility in specific cases. And those, <coughs> there can be, if, if there is a valuable tool in a lawful activity, well, I ask we provide domain names to everyone. And it's also an activity that is useful to society in general. Then it's a social adequacy activity. So the court find that the, the activity of IS is something that you can call the social adequacy activity. So what does this mean? Well, we acted intentionally. The court finds that we acted intentionally, but as we have motivi motivated our position in public, we have had blog in uh, blogs posts stating that we have uh, that we do uh, why we actually do this. So the court finds that we have no obligation to act, but rather an obligation not to act without direct instructions from the uh, from from a judicial panel. Well. The court says that this, the assignments at the manager of, an, manager of an important public function, that's the registry business that we do, do not include to judge what in a specific case can be considered unlawful or not. That's what we have said. Well, the court took our argument and they found that our starting points for our view is seen as legitimate and motivated. So, the court actually finds that our behavior in this specific case must be seen as permitted. So, it was intentional, but permitted behavior by us. So, the, leg uh, the legal consequences is that the prosecutor's claims against IS was not approved. Well, the domain name shall, however, be confiscated from the domain holder. So this actually means that the domain names in itself shall accrue to the state, and IS disposal over the domain names will then be limited. So this is what the district court said. Now it has been appealed, and the Court of Appeal will try this case in, in March. So it's still very interesting to see where we end. And the question that arises uh, 
when we got this case and when we got the verdict and now when we know it's appealed this. Could this court case actually impact our role as a registry? What will happen next? How will we handle the outcome in practice? Well, I would, if, if starting with the first question, I would say that this court case will not impact our role as a registry. It's a very specific case. The amount of, uh, of copyright infringement that has been ongoing on the Pirate Bay is, is enormous, and it's therefore it's so specific. So what will happen next? We don't know. That depends on what the Court of Appeal says in their verdict. But we still have to find out how we will handle the outcome in practice, if it's going to be the same. If the domain names are to accrue to the state, what that, that, does that mean? Are they going to own the domain names or, the, or the, the right to the domain names? For how long? Are they going to pay us for it? So there are still a lot of legal questions left. So first we wait for the verdict from the, the Court of Appeal, and hopefully we will have that in April. And then we will have to find out how we'll handle the outcome in practice. So hopefully I will be back next year to tell you what we have been doing. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Hi, I'm Kirsi Suni from DOTFI Legal Council. Uh, did you have uh, any cases against the ISPs with this? Against? The ISPs, uh, the telecom companies, because in Finland the Pirate Bay cases were only against, well, they were tried so that uh, the ISPs were responsible to do something but not the registry. We have, had a few, we have had a few cases, and there is actually one case pending at the moment uh, discussing, or, or, discussing or, or actually um, on the question of the ISP's uh, liability as an intermediary. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go into detail to those cases now, but there is one part of the strategy from the prosecutor or for the for the law authorities to to try and get content down from from the internet thank you oh we have one more question okay. hello uh, since there are term and conditions could you speak up a bit please? Oh, sorry since there are term and conditions yes. attached to the domain name does that mean that this, this is basically a contract? And if that's acquired to a state, in what, uh, how does the contract transfer to the state? Are they obliged to follow the conditions in terms two? And yeah. what happens when a contract becomes property that then gets transferred to a state? If, if I understand your question, Correctly, you wonder what's going to happen to the domain names when they accrue to the state. More or less, the term terms and conditions of the, term, of the domain names. That is what, what my basic question is. Because I can understand how property can be transferred, but term conditions attached to contracts, and that normally include two parties. The and state will probably have to be our contract partner, but we don't know. So that's why the contract party might be the state. We will have to find out. So that's an interesting question. That's the next step. Do we have any more questions for Elizabeth? No? So thank you so much, Elizabeth. Welcome. It will be really interesting afterwards to see how we can handle this.